there's a uh, pandemic across India of metal poisoning. What's happening is that as industry moves into small towns and villages, they're polluting the environment. As climate change happens, uh, all sorts of new minerals are going into, and into the environment, into the water supplies. And the tests required for things like cadmium and God knows what other you know, metals and so on, they are either unavailable or extremely expensive, not available. So this is a problem that they have here at Ames. So I'm going to solve that problem first. My goal is within the next six months to have a device here by which they can do what uh, you know, do the same thing as they do with their advanced medical equipment in detecting uh, metal poisoning in urine, also in breath. I'm inside a research facility at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences in New Delhi and I'm joined by Mr. Vivek Badva. He is a, a medical entrepreneur and uh, he is located, he's based out of the United States, but he is in India with his AI-based um, medical diagnostic marvel, if I may say so, and that is called Bionics Biosciences. So let's talk to the man for more on what he has to bring to uh, the citizens of the world regarding medical diagnostics. Mr. Vadva, Mr. thank you so much for taking out the time to speak to Strat News Global. Um, what brings you to India? Uh, that I want to solve the problem of suffering because of disease that big. In other words, I want to disrupt the entire medical diagnostics industry and give the poorest of the poor better access to medical diagnostics than the rich in Silicon Valley have. Okay. That's you how ambitious I am. Yeah. <laughs> you see, it is what you're saying sounds very grand, but then you're aware of the the load of disease, the load of uh, you know illness uh, that we have. If we were specifically to talk about India, also the amount of poverty, the amount of waterborne diseases, you know, uh, diarrhea, measles, dengue, uh, malaria, year after year. And not to mention cancer. Cancer is uh, one of the leading killers, uh, of, you know, all over the world. So, how did you start this journey? What is your story? Who are you? Who is yeah. Vivek Vatva? I'm a tech entrepreneur. I founded two companies, had a heart attack, became an academic, mm -hmm. started researching advancing technologies. I was at six universities at the same time, including Harvard, Duke, Stanford, um, Emory, um, and UC Berkeley, and Singularity University, Futuristic University. And um, then I lost my wife to cancer. Uh, I didn't know anything about medical diagnostics or medicine. I did everything I could to save her. And I realized how screwed up the medical system is. That uh, first of all, uh, there was no way of diagnosing what she had. And then the entire system for getting her treated required us to join up for clinical, clinical trials. And it was all for the benefit of the pharma industry, not for the patient. Mm -hmm. So after I lost her, I decided to fulfill her wish that I do all I can to prevent anyone from suffering the way she did. So I helped launch Carcanos Healthcare in the India. Uh, they're basically setting up an infrastructure for providing uh, cancer care all across India. They've done amazing things. They're now in all over India, they've, they've now set up an uh, integrated cancer care system that's in progress. What we discovered, however, was that almost every case we were seeing was at stage four. In India, not only is cancer taboo, people cannot afford to get tested for cancer. That's right. In, in the United States, for example, you can get uh, genetic sequencing, which costs about $1,000. And then you can get these grail tests, which cost, again, another $1,000. $1,000 is nothing in America for, uh, you know, for, for getting medical treatments. In India, you know, very, very, very few people can afford it. So the suffering is immense. So I started looking into uh, why, you know, uh, we, we, why there hasn't been any revolution in medical diagnostics for the past 50 years. The, you know, even Theranos, you remember Theranos, the fraud, $1.4 billion fraud? They were supposed to revolutionize medical diagnostics, but it was more of the same. It was essentially immunoassays, as they're called, where you take a drop of blood, you take a blood, you know, the said one drop of blood, 
break it into little buckets, and then you test it with different reagents. Right. That's the state of the art. And then you have mass spectrometry, very advanced equipment in which you ionize a sample, measure mass to charge ratios, and then you have genetic sequencing. There's no other breakthrough. So I started looking into that, and I realized that um, the fact that I didn't know anything about medical diagnostics gave me an advantage because I wasn't burdened by the techniques of the past. Clean sleep. Exactly. I, what I realized was that with mass spectrometry, mm -hmm. if you're you know, creating ions from a solid or from a liquid, rather than trying to measure mass to charge ratios and have human being, beings interpret these charts, why can't get artificial intelligence to do that? We're in the age of AI. Yes. You know, coming back full circle, this is what I've been teaching at uh, these universities and researching is AI, you know, sensors, networks, computing, all these advancing technologies. I've written books on exponential technologies. Why couldn't we now completely look, change the paradigm and use artificial intelligence to, to analyze what's in that, um, uh, you know, what's in this, in these ions, what's in this light spectrum that's generated? That was my thesis. So how is bionics bioscience? How, how is it different from Theranos? What well, is, yeah, because... Um, you talked of $1.4 billion. $1.4 My So far, I've come, I've spent about less than a million dollars. Right. And now I already have made the break. Thanks. You know, I've got to give credit to India for this. We can get back to that. Yes. Thanks to IIT Madras hmm. and AIMS, we have made major, major breaks. I'm now at the 90% confidence level that uh, we will disrupt the entire medical diagnostics industry because they have been able to uh, get scientists with ex scientists and engineers with experience in, in the hard sciences and things that, you know, in the United States, I actually tried doing this. I started tried starting this company there. I tried recruiting people over there. Uh, I, for uh, what I'm trying to do, which is uh, requires plasma, I needed plasma physics, thermodynamical engineering, electrical engineering, uh, uh, medical diagnostic experience in you know genetic sequencing, medical diagnostics, all of these different skills, you can't find people like that in the United States. Here, like at IIT Madras, sheer brilliance, engineers with the most amazing skills you could imagine, who have humility, who care about humanity. Mm -hmm. Then you come to the All India Institute of Medical Sciences where we are right now, you have you know professors, you have doctors, you have scientists who really care about humanity. Well, research oriented also. Research oriented. Just... They have all of the knowledge you need. What they don't have, what the, you know, what, what India is lacking is this industry and uh, academic collaboration. Right. Mm. Right. Uh. So that's something which I did. That's a nut that IIT is, uh, Madras has cracked. Okay. They have approval from the government to work with companies like mine to build world changing technologies. So the result of that is that within you know, a very short period of time, less than a year, they have made breakthroughs which the West could not make. Theranos, $1.4 billion, and I'm saying less than a million dollars. So uh, you spent less than a million dollars over how many months or how many years? Oh, I mean, um, I, 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 the basic R&D has been happening for three or four years okay. in Chile. And um, it, it, you know, it, it had... Um, scientists from different countries involved in, in, in doing some basic research over there. But then taking basic research and turning it into a commercial technology, that's a huge leap. Mm. That I've been doing myself, funding myself. Okay. And with the help of IIT Madras and AIMS, we have made major breakthroughs. How did you convince them? See, I'm very interested in, because like you talked of the distrust and you know you talked of Silicon Valley really not paying any heed to your technology. And obviously, you would have had a lot of um, big pharma companies uh, who I'm sure are completely skeptical, not just skeptical, but they're also wary of what you're trying to do. Yeah. And they're threatened by what you're trying to do. <laughs> I, I mean, isn't that so? I and, mean, the, so that's one part. And the, the second part is, how did you convince IIT, Madras, and Ames right. to uh, you know partner with you? Well, first of all, no one in the USA believes me. Because uh, they, I mean, I, I, I live near Sand Hill Road. Uh, these venture capitalists, CEOs of all these top, top companies, I call many of them my friends. I exchange emails with uh, Satya Nadella, Elon Musk. These are the people I hang out with. I you know, live very close to where Sheryl Sandberg lives. Uh, and, you know, uh, so this is the community that I hang out with. 
when I decided to start this company a year and a half ago, and I was looking for funding, everyone was very eager to meet me because I had a, you know, I built two companies before, I had a solid reputation. However, when I started talking about India, trying to help a billion people, I always said my goal is to offer diagnost medical diagnostics for 100 rupees. They couldn't understand why, hey, you could charge $1,000 for the same test over here. So when why do you care about India? So when you spoke uh, to them, you didn't say, I want to uh, help the how many ever million people in US? Your, your initial I, yeah. aim was to help people in India? Here, here's the catch. Okay. With artificial intelligence, the key is training data. Okay, uh, it's basically training and data, right? Okay. Um, in, in the medical field, it's a corrupt medical field. Yeah, I need tens of thousands of medical samples. Where am I going to get tens of thousands of medical samples from? Mm -hmm. in, in, you know, with American regulations and HIPAA and the corruption of the entire system, you can't get anything done there. This is why companies need hundreds of millions of dollars. In India, all you have is data. Now, you have to protect it. You have to you know, go by the letter of the law and make sure that there are no compromises of any kind. So who is ensuring that you're protecting this data? Well, I'm sorry, I'm, I seem to yeah, be asking yeah. hard Between questions. Between but... IITM and AIMS, mm. they are government institutions. They're not going to break any rules or do anything wrong over here. Mm. I'm also now locating my, all of my AI in India. You know, um, Ola has this new AI called Kutrim, it's a Sanskrit word, but they're actually setting up an infrastructure which rivals that of Google and Microsoft. So I'm actually, and I told Satya Nadella this, by the way, so then I said, go ahead, you know, uh, do what you have to do. I'm not, because I was joking with him saying, Satya, I hope you'll still endorse. And Satya endorsed two of my books. I said, I hope you'll still endorse my next book. <laughs> he took it in, in, you know, in a very positive light. He says, um, uh, you know, go ahead. I'm not afraid of competition. <laughs> so <laughs> what Ola is doing with their AI is to take on the Western giants. They're building their own AI infrastructure. And now moving everything over to into Olda's infrastructure. So all of the, not only does the data stay That's in India. That's near Bangalore, the yeah. facility near Bangalore? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So not only does my data stay in India, so does the AI. So, uh, so are so, you going to stop being an American? Are you going to be an Indian again? Well, <laughs> I, I got an OCI card just okay. for coming here. Okay. So <laughs> now uh, I'm also a citizen of India. I'm obviously a citizen of India. But right. what I realized is that uh, Silicon Valley doesn't take India seriously. It's almost a colonial, colonial disrespect for but that. if you were doing it for the Americans, I mean, I'm still a bit, you know, not clear about If I was doing it for the that. Americans, mm -hmm. I could not have built this technology there. That's the problem. That I would not have been able to hire the scientists and the engineers, uh -huh. the, phys you know, the physics experts and so on. I could not have gotten that. And then, even if I did build the technology in India and took it to America, I would not be able to get the data necessary to train our AI. Right. Both of those things are impossible. So if I now... Uh, go by Indian rules and regulations and go overboard in protecting data and anon anonymity and all of these things. If I solve the problems of India, I have everything I need. So in how many years will an Indian woman be able to get herself screened for cancer? Okay, so my, Cervical cancer, breast cancer. I mean, uh, right now, the, the, the goals are more tactical. Uh, at, you know, we're at the Center for Clinical Exotoxicology at AIMS. There's a uh, pandemic across India of metal poisoning. What's happening is that as industry moves into small towns and villages, they're polluting the environment. As uh, climate change happens, uh, all sorts of new minerals are going into the, and into the environment, into the water supplies. And the tests required for things like cadmium and God knows what other you know, metals and so on, they are either unavailable or extremely expensive, not available. So this is the problem that they have here at AIMS. So I'm going to solve that problem first. My goal is within the next six months to have a device here by which they can do what uh, you know, do the same things they do with their advanced medical equipment in detecting uh, metal poisoning in urine, also in breath. And then... In breath? In breath. Because a lot of what happens is that um, also we're doing metals and volatile organic compounds. So things like tuberculosis, other other types of you know in Ayurveda, um, the, you know, they, you know what, what the uh, practitioners do is they look at the tongue. Why? Because you breathe over the tongue, the deposits on the tongue. So the entire system of it's based on the gut, yeah, the microbiome. Yeah, ancient Indian wisdom. Uh, if you you know if you put everything together, you begin to realize that a lot of it is in the breath. 
the breath is the key to detecting disease. Not every disease, many diseases. So we can detect a lot of that through uh, the breath. So my goal is to have a device here by which they can start doing uh, screening for metal poisoning. And then in 2025, also did, uh, some of the other common diseases in India, such as tuberculosis. That's what I want to do. Cancer is my ultimate goal. But for that, you need to do uh, blood. And we need a lot more technology development than the low-hanging fruit, which is you know metal poisoning and volatile organic compound detection. So that's my 2025 goal. 2025. 2025. And the test will cost around how much? Uh, the cost to us is electricity for three or four minutes, plus AI computing. Okay. And Bhavesh Agarwal has offered me, uh, uh, you know, the all-up platform for free for the for, for the foreseeable future. Wow. So the cost is almost zero. That's why the target price is 100 rupees is what I want to charge the poor. Tremendous, tremendous work, uh, Mr. Vadhava. But now <laughs> it is for us to see how the other, because you are definitely going in for a disruption. Yes. And disruption is something like your friends, uh, Elon Musk and <laughs> all of them have always done, you know, be it Zuckerberg, be it Elon Musk, be it, you know, the rest of these, uh, you know, people, the young generation idolize now. Uh, but yes, definitely. So are, are you not worried? Are you not? Worried about how the big pharma companies or how the other companies in are? In India, I've met uh, the Prime Minister twice. Uh, um, Modi has told me that he will do everything. He, he said the country will do everything they can to support me. Okay. So he's pledged his support. Oh, no, and then I have, and then uh, Ajay Sood, this principal scientific advisor, Rajesh Gokhale, Secretary of Biotech, they've been going out of the way to help me. Okay. So I'm not worried about India stopping me because India has no industry to protect. It's back home. I hope the Americans don't disown me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Vadva, for taking out the time to speak to us. And Absolutely. I wish you all the very best Thank in this you. amazing endeavor of yours and very important endeavor. It's all for India. It'll be a, uh, you know one of the first technologies made in India, for India, and then for the rest of the world. And my goal is to let India you know, leapfrog the world in medical diagnostics and then in medical research. All of this is possible in yes. India. Yes, all of this is possible. It is a wait and watch, and we will definitely be waiting and watching. Sure. Thank you very much. Absolutely. <laughs>